You're asking about uh, temperatures yesterday, high and low temperature. And you need to know about this if you're going to do any medical work at all. Now, normal body temperature, it varies a bit, but it's normally about 36.5 degrees centigrade. Sometimes a bit higher, sometimes up to 37 degrees centigrade. And it might even occasionally be a little higher than that, especially in the evenings. Temperatures tend to be a little higher in the evenings than they are in the morning. But generally, you say if someone's temperature is about 37.1 or 37.2 or higher than that, then that would, be, that would be a high temperature. That means it's getting a bit high. So 37 degrees centigrade is normal. Now, if the temperature drops below 35 degrees centigrade, if someone's out in the field, especially if they're wet and the temperature drops below 35 degrees centigrade, you classify that as a hypothermia. Now, whenever you come across the term hypo, H-Y-P-O, it always means too low. And thermia means heat. So hypothermia means low body heat, below 35 degrees centigrade. And that actually becomes quite a serious condition if the temperature drops below 34 degrees centigrade. At that temperature, someone will be shivering intensely and feel incredibly cold. But if it drops lower than that, down to about 33 degrees centigrade or even 32 degrees centigrade, then what happens is the part of the brain that controls the shivering is too cold to work and the person actually stops shivering. And if they stop shivering, they're not generating heat because the purpose of shivering is to generate heat. So if they stop shivering, the temperature is going to drop down really quite quickly and then their life is in danger. So if you come across a hypothermic patient who's shivering, it's time to get them warmed up, certainly. But if you come across a hypothermic patient who is not shivering, that is a life-threatening condition and they need emergency treatment to get them warmed up again. Now thinking about the temperature going in the other direction, the temperature going high. When the temperature goes above 37 degrees centigrade or 37.1 or 37.2 degrees centigrade, they're starting to get too hot. Now technically that would be called a hyperthermia, H-Y-P-E-R. <laughs> Hyper means uh, high. Whenever you see hyper, it means high. And the most common cause of someone developing a hyperthermia, high body temperature, is that they've got an infection. And an infection is when there's viruses or bacteria growing in the body. And these release toxins, and the toxins affect the brain, and the brain increases the body temperature. Now, if the temperature is increased... As a result of infection, we call that a pyrexia, P-Y-R-E-X-I-A, a pyrexia. It's the same root as the word pyrotechnics. You know fireworks are called pyrotechnics. It's the same root as that. Pyros is, is Greek or Latin or something. I think it's Greek for, for fire. So if someone's pyrexial, it literally means they've got a state of fire, a state of heat. They're too hot. So if the temperature is above 37 point one say because they've got an infection we call that a pyrexia and that can go high it can could be 38 could be 39 some infections it could be even 40 some infections it could be even higher than that but normally with a, a mild bacterial infection your temperature might be 38 but with a more significant bacterial infection your temperature might be 39 39.5 and it's the same with viral infections. You can get someone with a viral infection, maybe just a viral sore throat that's caused a bit of a, a pyrexia, and the temperature can be 38, 39 degrees centigrade quite easily. And the other name for pyrexia, I guess it means much the same thing, is a fever. Um, a fever is someone who is in a state of pyrexia. And another old-fashioned word that people sometimes use is febrile, related to fever. So fever pyrexia and febrile all mean the same thing and it, mean, it means they've got an infection somewhere in the body so uh, what do you do about it well the reason that the body temperature has gone up is it actually helps the immune system of the body to combat the infection but it also makes them feel ill so sometimes you can give paracetamol and aspirin to bring the temperature down because paracetamol and aspirin will bring temperatures down 
But other times you can leave the temperature a little bit high, and that's okay because it helps them to fight, to fight the infection. If it's a bacterial infection that's caused the pyrexia, then they might need some antibiotics, antibiotic drugs. But of course, there's no point giving antibiotics to people with viral infections because antibiotics do not kill viruses. Antibiotics only kill bacteria. And occasionally you can get someone who's hypothermic for other reasons. Like if someone's dehydrated and they can't sweat, the body temperature can start to rise. So if, if one of the lads is out running on a hot day and they're in full kit and they can't, they can't lose heat or the sweat can't evaporate, then they can, can become hyperthermic. And your, um, your temperature can rise to 38 or 39 degrees centigrade. And that's quite dangerous. Hyperthermia, again, is a life-threatening condition. Hyperthermia is dangerous. And if that's the case, the, the lad has to stop exercising. You have to put him in the shade. You have to give him lots of water to drink. You have to take his clothes off so he can sweat. And even put water on him to, to cool him down a bit. So that would be a hyperthermia caused by generating too much heat or failure to lose heat from the body. So it's a bit confusing because the hyperthermia can be caused by these environmental problems, environmental heat, or it can be caused by dehydration, but it can also be caused by fever. But of course, if it's caused by fever, the person will probably feel unwell, they will feel ill, and they've probably got a history of feeling unwell for, for a few hours or, or a day or so before that. So uh, there you go, worth knowing about the importance of body temperature. And it's one of the most fundamental clinical medical observations you can make is to know what your patient's temperature is because that tells you a lot about what's wrong with them and it also starts to tell you what the heck you are going to do about it. Okay, mate, take care. Bye.